What is up, everybody? Ron Blue back again with another video for you guys. We are here with another reaction request. This time it comes from Peter Bartomello5542. This person says, Go watch Roy Buchanan Messiah Will Come Again live in Austin, Texas, 1976. Roy was the grandmaster of the Telecaster and the finger manipulation techniques of volume and tone control were first mastered by Roy, a country rock blues, jazz, grandmaster, guitarist. Okay. Um, we're going to jump right into this. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about this now. Um, so shout out to Peter Bartomello5542. Uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Roy Buchanan, uh, The Messiah Will Come Again. <laughs> Already, we, we're, we're here in the organ, um, so it's, it's definitely taking you right into kind of like a gospel feel. Let's continue. There's a town, there's a strange lonely little town they call the world. To one day a stranger appeared, and their hearts rejoiced. The sad little town was happy again. But there were some that doubted, they disbelieved, so they mocked him. And the strange went away. And the sad little town was sad yesterday. It's a long Saturday today. I walked in a lot of places and there should have been. But I'm Messiah. You will come again. One thing that I can say just off of the two minutes and 29 seconds that we are in right now, that is a lot of bending of the strings. Um, I'm very curious, especially for these artists now, um, that we can look back and see uh, how great they were, they were. What was his string gauges? Uh, Peter, if you know, or if anyone else knows, drop it in the comments. I'm very curious to know, um, especially on a Telecaster too, uh, what kind of string gauges did he prefer? Um, let's continue. <laughs> see it a little bit that that threw me completely off guard let's go back a little bit oh this is perfect you guys see the wear and tear of that neck 
it's, it comes out grainy once you zoom in, but that shows complete wear and tear of uh, like, or just the, the uses, the amount of uses that um, it took for him to um, develop that. Like we pay for that now, relicking your guitar. Um, that is, that looks to be, you know, and I guess there's no way that you could truly tell other than him being the way that he's bending the strings. It kind of gives off a more natural uh, relic. And, I, and and that's what I like. I like, personally, I like grabbing a guitar that's brand new and naturally getting worn out, beat up and stuff like that. Personally, I don't understand relic. If I'm going to pay four or $5,000 for a guitar, I'd rather it be brand new and wear it out. Um, you guys let me know in the comments what, what your preferences are or what is so fascinating about Relic guitars. Um, again, it's just one of those things for me. Uh, I see custom Gibsons. Like a, a lot of, most of the time, they, they do have, I want to say, um, an American Relic Fender Strat that I've seen before. Um, it wasn't a custom, but what what's the significance of it? What does it do as a purchaser or a buyer or even a dreamer of purchasing that type of guitar? Um, you guys let me know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
He reminds me of uh, who played. Um, it wasn't Ryan Reynolds. I'm drawing a blank on whoever played uh, the main character in the Notebook. He has that like a similar look to him. Um, very impressive. Very impressive, specifically with the bending of those co uh, of those notes. I feel like you could get the most bending out of the nine gauges, but it seemed like they snap at the same time. So again, I'm very curious to know exactly his, um, the string gauges to be able to do that. And then the trust that he has with the, with the, um, with the string staying in tune. It, I mean, that, it, I'm not sure if lock, locking tuners were around in 76 maybe you all could let me know but i'm assuming that's a little bit more of a newer thing otherwise well anyway you guys let me know in the comments on that if that is how new that is when was that introduced but um that's that's still something to bend that to bend it to where it sounds like the guitar is actually crying it, it, i mean and and singing at the same time is really um it's really amazing but you guys let me know in the comments what you guys think if you have any more recommendations of different guitars that i should listen to drop it in the comments this is the only channel that you're going to be getting videos like this guitar lessons guitar covers unboxings and so much more listen until next time and again